Hello, Moon and Star. Welcome. It's me, your boy, Penny Skeenis, back at it again with another video shilling the Odyssey. Because, well, I've remembered why it's so much fun, and also because I have a better build than the last time I did a video on it, which is also a video where I wasn't talking, so maybe I can explain a little better what's going on here. So, the last time what I did is I had, this was a locus, and then these were plasma cannons with advanced turret gyros, and the, all the other slots were empty. Of course, these were Xyphos, as you would expect. They just work so well on the Odyssey. But the idea there was, you don't have to make, like manually control any of the weapons, because the Odyssey really does want to have that 180 shield arc and accelerated shields, rather than a frontal shield. You know, 360 is very tempting, but the fact that this is very much a broadside ship means that those Omni shields are extremely, they're extraordinarily valuable, so I would stick to using those. But then the problem you run into is, if you're aiming your weapons and aiming the shield at the same time, well, what if you want to point your shield in one direction and fire your weapons in another? Well, if you only have, like, two weapons and you leave them both on auto-fire and just hit three, then that's not an issue. You're not controlling any of the weapons. And so that was the idea behind that build, and it worked fine, but I think if you want something that takes a little more, well, not that much more skill, but a little more skill, and works better, this would be it. So instead of Locus, we've got Squall, and instead of Plasma, we've got Auto Pulses with Expanded Mags. This is going to do a lot more against Shields. And, the weak, and so compared to that, Plasmas would do a lot more against Armor and Hull. But then we have these two Reapers, and if we open this up, you're going to leave everything on auto fire except for these reapers, and you're manually going to control them. Now the great thing about this is that you'll notice these have a 15 second cooldown. So what that means is that you can aim your shield in one direction, like this, right? Let's say with the plasma cannons, the issue would be if you're trying to manually control them, if you stop shooting to point your shield in, one, in this direction, then you're losing DPS in that while you're doing that. With these things, that's really not the case, because you're either holding on to them for the right moment to shoot, or you've already fired them, and they're on a 15 second cooldown. So you're pretty much free to point your shield in whatever direction you want, then when you're ready to fire the Reapers, you point at the, the target, click, shoot them, and then you can go back to controlling the shield. So that works really well. And then the last one, you could put a Sabo here if you want to really maximize that shield punch at close range. but. Uh, well, switching between different weapon groups requires a little more thinking than I want to do when I'm piloting a ship. So instead, I just control these, and then I leave this as a pylum on auto-fire. Because, you know, that's probably worth at least seven ordnance points, especially when you've got ECCM anyways. But, yeah, you know, there's a few things that are important here. So, we've got missile racks, which is maybe not necessary for these things. Well, it depends. Because with the ammo buff that Typhoons are... it's So far, it looks like Typhoons are going up to 7 shots per tube. Which means that with just Missile Racks or Missile Spec, one or the other, that's going to be 14 shots each. So this right here, that's 28 Reapers. That's a lot of Reapers. Like right now, if you have two Reaper tubes, and you have both missile spec and missile racks. That only that gets you thirty. So you have almost the same amount, even though you skip either the missile racks or the missile specialization. Now, if you're in a longer fight, maybe you want a crazy amount like forty-two reapers. But usually that's, you know, usually that's not necessary. Well, usually you can't even fire them that fast. It's a fifteen-second cooldown. You're not spamming them. So with that, so that's going to be important. Although, because you do have a squall, getting elite missile spec is really good, in which case maybe you drop miss, uh, missile racks. Or maybe you keep missile racks, because, again, it's good for the squall. Uh, auxiliary thrusters. Uh, before I was saying that you need like 150% maneuverability, I don't think that's true. I think 200, like getting that plus 100% from... You know, you've got auxiliary thrusters, you've got elite impact mitigation, you've got helmsmanship. Getting two of those three should be good. You don't need to stack all of them. 
one of them doesn't feel like quite enough, you, I do think that you do want two of them. Accelerated shields is just... Well, if you've got a big Omni shield on a capital ship, it's just really good. Resistant flux conduits, uh, so you can actively vent between, you know, that fits the, the hit-and-run playstyle of this type of ship, which, by the way, so do the auto pulses. That they're, you know, because you can burn in, do a bunch of damage, burn out, vent, and at the same time you're regenerating charges. And then you've got enough flux stats to make the whole thing work. So, I'm going to show this off, and then I'm going to show off a more advanced version of the build with, like, a bunch of player skills and S-mods and all of that. So, this will probably be a shorter video, because I'm really just shilling for the Odyssey here. Now, what would be... That's it. What would be really embarrassing right now is if I mess this up. But you can see why Xyphos are kind of a given, right? You don't need to spend any more points on point defense unless you really want to make sure that your ship is staying perfectly safe. But for the most part, they do their job and four free ion beams. So they're pretty powerful. So I'm going to point the squall at the Aurora by targeting it and then manually control the auto pulses that I was having an auto fire before so I can finish off the Enforcer. I probably should have done that sooner. But yeah, as long as you pilot carefully, this is not too difficult. Didn't quite save that for the right time, because you want to get the overload. In. Well, hopefully the first reaper so that the second one can punch through its armor, but, you know... I, but, you know, if you don't pull that off, it's still fine if you can at least get the overload of the second shot. So, that's how you would do that. Now, things get a little more interesting with the advanced version, because you can actually change what you do a little bit. Partly just because systems expertise completely transforms Plasma Burn. It makes it so much more useful. But, elite helmsmanship is actually really, really interesting on this ship. So that zero flux boost activating at any flux level, if we look at the ship, what's generating flux? Well, it's not the fighters. These aren't going anywhere. We're not using engage. Okay, what about weapons? You can see I've got a few more ordnance points from building in targeting unit. Uh, right, I should talk about the changes to the ship itself. But first I want to talk about helmsmanship because it's, I find this really interesting. Usually that zero flux bonus is not useful. There's a lot of ships where just it's like, that's cool, but this isn't doing anything for me. This is a case where it really is, because even with these additional antimatter blasters, there's no point defense on this ship. So that means what's the only things that generate flux are these antimatter blasters, which are strike weapons, so they have very long cooldowns where they're not generating flux. Your shield, so if you're out, you're like at the edge of or out of enemy range, you can turn off your shield. And then these auto pulses, where even if you're in range to shoot at the enemy, you can shut them off. And because they're charge-based weapons, you're not actually losing DPS, right? It was assuming that you've already shot at the enemy a little bit. You can shut them off, and they'll store up those charges so you're not losing any of your DPS. And at the same time, you're stopping yourself from generating flux. So it becomes a lot easier to activate that zero flux boost, which can help you. I mean, that's 50 extra top speed and a bunch of extra maneuverability. So that's really useful. So with S mods, built-in hardened shields, because, well, that's just pretty good, especially when you've got 20,000 flux capacity. And then built in the targeting unit. Now, the reason I didn't build in missile racks is because it seems like it's going to have an s mod penalty in the next patch, which slightly slows down missile rate of fire. You could argue that, like, a 20% rate of fire penalty won't matter too much, because, yeah, it'll de decrease squall DPS, but it also means the squall lasts longer. It is on auto fire. And yeah, it slows down the Reaper cooldown a little bit, but they already have a very long cooldown. So does that really matter that much? Well, you could, you could, so you could, the idea is instead of building in your targeting unit, you build in missile racks, which gives you five extra ordnance points, but that comes at the cost of a slight penalty to missile rate of fire. It's, a lot of people freaked out about that announcement, but 
Honestly, it's really not a big deal, even on capital ships. Like just if you really hate it that much, just build in a 25 point mod instead. You've given up five points. Big deal. It's a capital ship, and in exchange, you avoid the penalty. Now, otherwise, this is mostly the same, but now we've got solar shielding because, well, you're probably going to take solar shielding in the later game, partly to deal with remnants and partly because you can stack it on your entire fleet and just ride through hyperstorms and use them as a speed boost instead of a, instead of an obstacle. You're just taking work because, you know, you see this reduces the effect of not only solar corona, but this, it has the same effect against hyperspace storms, 75% reduced damage from them. So it turns it down to basically nothing. And then the other thing that I've added here is unstable injectors. Now, even with that 15% range penalty, you still want your targeting unit, right? The, if you have unstable injectors, the difference between that's the difference between 85% range with the injector by itself versus 136% range. That's pretty big. You still want your targeting unit. Don't skip it. But of course, you could say, well, why bring the unstable injectors? The range penalty is pretty big. I find that the 15 extra top speed is pretty useful. I mean, look at this. We've got elite helmsmanship. We've got max combat readiness and unstable injectors. Well, now we've got a top speed of 104 on a capital ship, plus plasma burn and systems expertise. This thing can move. This thing can really move. Now, you can boost this further by getting nav rating as well, which would be, well... You can get up to the point where you're faster than a lot of destroyers, or you can actually be up at the speed of some of the slowest frigates as well, before plasma burn. So that can be quite the monster when you've got three large slots and a bunch of strike weapons as well. I've... Is there anything else I have to say about this? Not really. I mean, the fighter replacement time doesn't matter too much because these are sitting around. And so with the extra... Right, with, you see, the extra flux, because we have elite energy weapon mastery, that means that this number looks scarier once you slap on these antimatter blasters, but because we're generating less flux, it's actually manageable. It's not as bad as it looks, which allows us to afford these extra weapons. And then the other thing is the damage bonus from energy weapon mastery scales off of, well, the tooltip's not showing up, but it scales off of your range. So if they're further away, then you're losing some of that bonus. So while unstable injectors, the range penalty is a bad thing, but at the same time, it does mean that your auto fire is not shooting as far away, which means that you're getting more of that damage bonus. I wouldn't, you know, deliberately reduce your range to do that, but if you're getting unstable injectors anyways for that speed penalty, there's speed bonus, then that's kind of a nice little, uh, it's a nice little thing that kind of mitigates the downside a little bit. But overall, I I do have to like manually set up, so if you try to auto assign, it's kind of, a, well that's kind of a mess, so we're going to cancel that. Instead, you, I like to have any master blasters on one, typhoons on two, leave them alternating, and then three auto pulse, four pylum, five squall, leave them on auto fire. And so I can show you what that looks like by throwing down a bunch of ships, because it kind of, well, it doesn't matter to a, a large extent. Look how, look how well this thing moves. This thing is graceful like a swan. And, you know, you can just throw in a ton of ships, really. And as long as you're careful, you can basically take out any number of ships, because, well, that's embarrassing. You can basically take out any number of ships, because you can just rely on hit and run tactics and there's not a lot they can do about it, at least in the simulator. Let me just use uh, plasma burn to dodge that, fairly easy. And you'll notice that I, well, was I using it there? Well, hold on, I'll, I'll probably talk about it as I use it next. All right, instead of venting, what you can do is just turn off your shield, get that zero flux boost, and let your natural dissipation get rid of the flux and at the same time your squall can continue firing because you're not you know if you if you vent you interrupt that so you're getting right and if also when you're venting you lose the zero flux boost so see i get the extra speed and maneuverability i'm firing my squall and my flux is dissipating all at the same time 
And so that's where the uh, the elite bonus of helmet ship is actually really good on this ship. Partly just because the extra speed means you don't have to use your plasma burn charges as often, which lets you save them up for when you're in trouble. So there's that. I'll also take this over and fight the hegemony a little bit. We'll fight these guys. Move in to engage. Yes, 346. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. And part of why it's not that hard is because I, they don't seem to deploy everything at the start. They look at your ship and go, yeah, we could deploy like half of our shit and still kick your ass. Well, that's what they think. Little do they know they're fighting me. A god gamer. How do you do, fellow gamers? And I missed. Well, that's gonna happen, you know. Even a god gamer is gonna miss those free fruits. Especially when it counts. And again, elite helmsmanship right here. Although, the, the pylum spam is gonna be a little annoying here. And also these things. Shice. Come on. Wait, I hit that? Alright. Let's do this. You can see they haven't even deployed the onslaught. Because the AI has assumed it's not going to need it. But it'll come. It'll come out eventually. Just you wait. You little pain in the ass. Alright, well that's taken care of. Oh, that got shot down? Damn. Huh. Oops, I did not mean to overload there. I should have, uh, I was intending to turn off my shield as the squall, as the, uh, Sabo came in, but I missed the timing. Now, Elite Systems Expertise does make the overload shorter, which is handy. I have tried putting heavy armor on it since I do really recommend impact mitigation. 50% reduced damage to your engines and 50% increased maneuverability from the same skill. You know, at that, like, that's really good. At that point, the, the armor damage reduction is almost secondary, but I did... In spite of that, I tried putting heavy armor on the Odyssey, and it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not worth the ordnance points. Oh, well, that's not good. Ow. Well, I mean, the Odyssey might be, or the, uh, that might be a level 7 officer in, in the Onslaught, but, I mean... If it's alone, it's not going to beat an Odyssey. Not the player pilot one. And if you're looking for something to pair with this, then, well, what I did before would probably work. Monitors are good. You know, they're great for peeling these guys off of you so that you're not overwhelmed by a million ships chasing you down. Although, they do have the problem of not being very good at taking capture points, but if your total fleet power is small enough, then capture points won't even spawn anyways. So if you're looking for stuff to take capture points, uh, I'll... Hey, scarabs are good. Omens are pretty good. Actually, omens are really good because... You know, the lack of point defense here still is a bit scary at times. Oh shit. I got way too... 
Go, that's tunnel vision for you. I was like, yes, I can kill the monitor. Okay, hold on. Let me try that again. That's that's totally doable. See, don't tunnel vision. Tunnel vision gets you killed. Although you probably already know that from first-hand experience, if I had to guess. If you've been playing this game enough, it's happened. All right, let's see if I can handle this a little more elegantly. Come on. Come here, little guy. Oh, right, that's another thing that uh, you can do with smaller ships, in particular, is you can just ram them with plasma burn if they're in front of you. Focusing. There we go. Missing an air blaster shot. Very nice. Pylums did some nice, nice fragmentation damage there. Holy oh, crap, where's the rest of the fleet? Well, there's the Sunder. And the Onslaught's only now showing up, and I don't see anything else backing it. Okay, there's the Griffin, there's the Sunder. Alright. just as I was about to overload, but I didn't quite get the timing on that. Overload, two seconds. Okay, we're good. And yeah, I'm just gonna let the zero flux boost kick in from Helmsmanship and run away here while I save up my charges. out of range and at the same time turn off the shield and that will get you a clean getaway like I'm redeeming myself here. I can do it. Nice. And the rest is, at this point, is just a formality. It's just the onslaught of life, as far as I can tell.
that should do it. And, oh, I was going to say they retreated. Yeah, so that's about it. See ya.